my name is Wissem. I'm 30 years old, uh, too many hobbies. My favorite one is actually being architect at Sensio Labs. Uh, I've been here for five years now, having a lot of fun, and I have several roles at Sensio Labs, um, mainly carrying out migration studies, which is our topic today. Uh, I also carry architectural studies and audits as well, which, um, which often go hand in hand with migration topics. Uh, I also perform other kinds of audits, uh, like code quality audits, performance audits, and even tailor-made audits um, to bring together several topics needed by the client. Um, what else? I play a technical management role uh, on some of our important projects that we develop for our cl clients. Um, I also do some technical coaching on certain teams of our clients. And more occasionally, I give um, symphony training courses. Uh, and if I still have uh, um, some more time after all of this, I try to structure the expertise department and sense your labs and by training junior architects. Um, and by the way, we need more people all the time. So if you think you fit the job description, just drop me a mail. essentially talking about two things actually uh, either we have an application already on symphony uh, but using an old version and we would like to upgrade it or we we are not yet on symphony and we would like to migrate our application there uh, so usually version upgrades or redesigns of small application uh, or when the gap between versions of symphony the target one and the the old one uh, when it's not very large it doesn't require a, uh, a large study phase. So um, because it's, it can be done in one go uh, without too much complexity. Uh, and one day we will just uh, shut down the old application and uh, deploy the, the new one and that's it. On the other hand, um, when the application to migrate is very large in terms of lines of code uh, or when um, the gap between symphony versions is very large, uh, or when we would like to take advantage of the migration process in order to review technical architecture, uh, the data model of, the, data, of the, the application or its features, where it becomes a real subject of study um, because several technical and non-technical obstacles arise in the way of this kind of project. Uh, and the, the one-shot migration strategy is, not, uh, is no longer a viable option actually. So it's mandatory to anticipate those obstacles, uh, to set a target, and above all, to set a migration a strategy to achieve that target. This is what we call progressive migration. Um, and, this is, and it's progressive actually because globally, um, we actually migrate the application batch by batch or even URL by URL. So we're implementing design patterns like uh, Strangler pattern, which makes the current application and the new one coexist uh, for a long period of time, um, allowing the, the, the old application to take over the, uh, the new application, sorry, to take over the old one progressively. Well, it's always a good time to upgrade Symfony or to migrate to Symfony. Um, because if we're talking about an upgrade of a Symfony application, well, the, the framework itself uses a standard called Semver uh, for semantic versioning um, to expose a simple yet extremely predictable roadmap. So in addition to, to, that, to that, there's a deprecation mechanism in Symfony that allows you to anticipate and safely perform upgrades. With this feature, you can actually plan uh, your major and minor re uh, release upgrades according to the, to the roadmap of the framework. And you can update the patch releases at any time you want, uh, but ideally as they arise. In the other hand, if we're talking about progressive migration, um, well, the, the, the ultimate goal of a migration study is precisely to, to take into account all the risk factors identified at the moment the study is carried out. Um, it can therefore be carried uh, at any time in the life of the project. However, in my own experience, um, this kind of study is, uh, 
usually it comes very late uh, when the application is virtually reaching the uh, the end of its life when we do not know anymore what what to do with it uh, because it's no longer maintainable uh, because it's difficult to make things evolve inside it and because the uh, the one shot migration is an uh, option is not it's no longer possible actually um, so this is where at sensor labs we offer a way uh, a way out of this kind of uh, situations by proposing progressive migrations, even and especially very, very late in the, in, in the project's lifetime. Um, yes, several things actually. Uh, it's always better to prepare yourself for a migration project uh, because it's not only a technical project, it, it's, it's a, um, an enterprise level project. It will be involving uh, not only technical teams, but also uh, business teams. Uh, so there are some prerequisites for before migrating. Uh, I can take a couple of examples. Um, at some point of the migration realization process, uh, you will need to rapidly iterate through features, uh, through URLs, through code blocks to migrate. Um, you will need to deliver and deploy them in the form of small pieces of your software. So to achieve this eff efficiently, you will need to be agile. Uh, so it's mandatory to either implement uh, Scrum processes or any other kind of agile methodology uh, with a Git flow that will allow you to manage small iterations. Um, another example of prerequisites would be the uh, uh, the stack, the whole stack of automatic uh, code quality control tools that will be an important part of, of your new target application because it will need uh, heavy stabilization work actually in order to avoid introducing regressions inside it. And a huge part of, part of this effort of stabilization and um, uh, quality control and testing, etc. Uh, should be automated, actually, it must be automated. Uh, it, it shouldn't be uh, performed manually by developers. Uh, yet another example of prerequisite would be the release management system, which is a, a key piece of your migration strategy because you will need to keep uh, making your existing application evolve in the time uh, while migrating it in the same time. So these are two roadmaps that you will need to coordinate together the, during the release process. Um, a fourth prerequisite example would be uh, a good specification uh, management. By specifications, I, I'm talking about the, the application specifications, functional ones. Uh, for by, by example, by writing them uh, using the Girkin syntax, um, it could be a good idea or even mandatory for uh, use cases, like for example, when you're planning to introduce functional changes during the migration process. Um, so if you set up all of these prerequisites beforehand, you will save time, money, effort, and complexity for your migration study. Otherwise, they will be discussed and taken into account during the, uh, the study phase. The first thing to do is actually to take a stock of the situation. Uh, we usually start with a kickoff workshop where we talk about a lot of technical things and functional topics. Uh, the goal for me uh, is actually behind that workshop is to immerse myself in the company's life and context with a critical eye in order to identify anything that could constitute an obstacle to the migration object. Um, but before even I start doing this, I usually start with a coffee with the whole team uh, in order to get uh, to know each other uh, and put people in confidence. And this is actually very important because we, we will spend uh, whole days talking about problems and trying to find solutions to those problems. And it's quite easier when you know each other a minimum. At Sensio Labs, we, we divide the migration project into three main stages. Um, the first one is understanding the, uh, understanding the client's requirements and goals. Uh, we need to know actually if we can meet those requirements, if we are able to provide reasonable yet relevant uh, technical answers to, to those goals. And uh, we need to size the migration study phase in order to provide the client with a, uh, a budget estimation. The second phase is about carrying out the, uh, the study uh, phase itself. Uh, and uh, here we will imagine 
theoretical uh, solutions to our client issues. Uh, we'll uh, define a migration strategy, and sometimes we will need to provide proof of concept uh, developed by with the client to to prove that the solution is viable yet uh, efficient. Um, at the end of this phase, we design a migration plan, as, as I said, and we send it to the client for validation. The third stage and the last one is about presenting a, um, a synthesis report of the study. The report sometimes includes a technical architecture document. So uh, after this presentation, the client can end the mission there or it can they can uh, continue for a, a few more steps. For example, we can go into the study in depth for more specific elements and topics inside the code or in the architecture. Uh, or for example, we can support the realization phase of the, uh, the migration by providing development resources uh, or some coaching and expertise help. Well, as the creator of Symfony, uh, Sensio Labs benefits actually by nature from privileged access to the core team of the framework. So in addition to the internal expert technical support at Sensio Labs uh, that supports me during my missions and the other uh, architect, uh, architects, um, actually our synergies with the framework are very high and we can predict the evolution of Symfony in the coming years. So in any cases, we, we can interact with the core team and ask them to give some customized answers to a couple of questions of, of our clients uh, during the project. So migrating with Sensio Labs is definitely a plus for your project. Mm -hmm.